Welcome back to Yankee Sox Joe. I'm Meredith Morakovitz alongside Jameson Tyone. Jameson, you are officially a New York Yankee. How surprised were you to learn that you had been traded? Um, I knew it was a possibility going into the offseason. Uh, our GM, Ben Sherrington in Pittsburgh, kind of kept me inside the loop. And, I mean, the writing was on the wall with the direction the organization was headed. Um, it felt like the Yankees were kind of attached to me all offseason. Um, and when I talked to some of the guys within the organization, they mentioned that they had been kind of following me throughout the offseason, watching my videos on social media, talking to the Pirates about me. Um, so it seems like a great fit. Did you reach out to your old roommate, Garrett Cole, to see what life would be like in Yankee land? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, we had a really good talk probably two days ago now. Um, he kind of gave me the rundown. Um, he said, you know, you're going to be shocked at how incredible this organization is and how they treat the players. Um, you know, he gave me some media tips. He, he gave me the rundown, but we're excited to get to run it back. Um, you know, obviously in Pittsburgh, I was hurt a good amount. He got traded early on in my time there. So we never had that full chance to, to give it a go together. So I'm excited to be reunited with him. What excites you most about the opportunity in general? Um, well, as far as working with Garrett, you know, he's someone that sharpens me and he loves talking pitching. So to be around a teammate like that, um, who's always looking to get better and make those around him better. I know it sounds cliche, but Garrett's like, I'm sure you guys noticed in his first year, he's always talking about baseball, pitching, really intently watching the games. So that excites me. Um, and then from everyone I've talked to within the organization, one, the priority is winning, which is refreshing and exciting for me. And two, like from the pitching side, um, everyone I've talked to said, just, you know, wait until you get in that pitcher's room. We have a lot of guys that are extremely smart, good dudes who love talking about pitching. So that lines up with exactly how I am. You mentioned some of the videos that you were doing throughout the offseason, throwing. You've changed things a, a little bit coming off your second Tommy John surgery. Why did you decide to change things, and how difficult were, was it for those new adjustments to be made? Yeah, I felt like I didn't really have a choice. Um, you know, I had my first Tommy John surgery in 2014, and leading up until my second one, I felt like I was never fully healthy. So it was something that was in the back of my mind that maybe I could switch some things uh, to take pressure off my elbow and then once I got this surgery, that was like the final straw. I saw it as an opportunity, you know, rehab for an elbow takes 12 to 18 months. So I said, I've got this time to strip it down and like completely rebuild myself. Um, so that's what I did. And so far the results have been pretty great. Um, it was tough at first, it felt really foreign to me. And then now it's kind of the opposite. Like I see videos the way I used to throw and I really don't even like to see it. So, um, you know, I've made some big changes and hopefully it transitions into success on the field. I know in my live VPs and sim games at the end of the year, it was definitely translating really well. What are some of those adjustments that you made? Yeah, so I started with my lower body, the way my lower body moves. Um, I was super across my body, not really activating the big muscles in my legs. So that was putting more pressure in my arm. Um, I'm like a really long and loose guy. I'm tall and got long limbs. So my arm was really far away from my body. Um, so oh, I just wasn't moving efficiently. Um, I like to call it like connectivity, connection. Like my body just wasn't completely connected and working together. Um, so that kind of left my arm out to dry, you know, creating 95 miles an hour without properly using big muscles and stuff is pretty dangerous for your arm. Um, so I focused on a hip hinge movement, get my glutes involved. Um, and then by doing that, it really shortened up my arm path as a byproduct. I started using weighted balls, doing all sorts of cool medicine ball drills. Um, and that kind of has led me to where I'm at now. Who helped you throughout that process? Was there somebody in particular you went to to make sure that you were doing everything mechanically correct? Yeah, so after I got hurt, I think it was like May of 2019 against the Rangers. Um, I knew something wasn't right. And then I started, you know, go see a doctor, get a second opinion, third opinion, fourth opinion. And while I was doing that, I got in contact with a place called the Florida Baseball Ranch. Um, and they, you know, this was before I even had my surgery, but I kind of knew in the back of my mind, I, I knew the path I was headed down. Um, mm -hmm. And I wanted them to be a part of everything I did and all the changes I made. So I did an assessment there. I've been just overloading them with video throughout the process on everything I'm doing. Uh, pitching coaches in Pittsburgh, PTs. I sent Garrett tons of video throughout the process. I'm sure everyone was getting sick of me because I was just sending video to everyone. 
Um, but I love feedback. I love collaboration. I love to hear, and you know, having a guy like Garrett on your side, like he's kind of gotten to see my evolution and my mechanical changes. So that's been cool. Has your off season been a lot different in the way you train? Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm 29 now in baseball years, that's not like extremely young. So, you know, in my younger years it was all about lifting extremely heavy, getting as strong as possible. I'm still getting in the weight room, but I'm putting more focus on like mobility, controlling my, my, uh, end range strength and mobility. Um, the goal for me is to stay healthy. If, if I can deadlift all the weight in the world, but if my elbow doesn't feel good, like there's absolutely no purpose to that. So I'm lifting with it kind of being seen as a compliment to my throwing. The throwing takes the priority right now. Arm care drills take the priority, the recovery, the PT, all that. What are your expectations for the 2021 season? Um, you know, I haven't sat down and thought about it for like an individual personal level. I don't know how many innings I'm going to throw. These are conversations I have to have, uh, you know, having not pitched in two years, I feel extremely healthy. Um, you know, I want to be out there as much as possible. Um, and, you know, as a, as a baseball fan, you know, I've been watching the Yankees from afar and, you know, this team is built to win. This team's built to go deep into October. So I've never been on a winning team. You know, I've maybe been on a couple teams in pro ball that are above 500, but I've never experienced a clubhouse like this where, you know, guys are showing up and the mission is to win. And that genuinely fires me up. You mentioned the amount of innings you may potentially pitch. Do you have a number in your head as far as what you think you're capable of giving them coming off the second time, John? Um, so there's the idea in my head is like, I'm healthy, you know, I'm fixed. I'm ready to go. So I'll go as, as long and deep as they want me to. I think it's going to have to be kind of a collaborative effort. You know, I'm going to have to communicate with them how I'm feeling, how I'm recovering, bouncing back. Um, you know, they have a great performance team in place. I've already had some calls with those guys. Um, so we're going to have to stay in touch throughout the season and be extremely honest. But I think, you know, with Pittsburgh, we had set out 20 to 25 starts, 100 to 140 innings somewhere in there seemed like a good number but you know obviously that can change throughout a, a long season how anxious are you to just get going again i just booked my uh, airbnb for spring training like i'm ready to go my girlfriend's looking at apartments in new york she's gonna go up there like we're so excited just to get moving with this process um i've talked to matt blake a couple times now like i can't wait to work with him I've been following all my Yankees teammates on social media. Can't wait to meet all of them. I'm really excited. What's the first thing you'll do when you get in that new clubhouse? Uh, just try to remember everyone's name. It, this is, it's overwhelming. Um, you know, I've been getting calls, text messages. Um, I've added more contacts into my phone book in my last like three days than I ever have in my life. So uh, I just hope I don't butcher anyone's names. Um, I'm just going to kind of lay low and kind of prove my worth through my work. And then over time, I'll open up and develop those relationships. Now, you've had to overcome a lot of adversity throughout your baseball career. What keeps you going back and, and motivated to continue to improve? Yeah. Um, I'd say the number one thing is throughout every injury, like there's this deep feeling in my soul that I have more to offer. I have more to give on a baseball field. Um, I know I haven't reached my full potential yet. I know it's in there. Um, you know, I've seen flashes of it. Other people have seen flashes of it, but I know there's still this talented baseball player in there. You know, I was picked high in the draft for a reason. I've, I've had success in the big leagues for a reason. Um, now I just need to go out there and do it over an extended time. So every time I've been hurt, it's been like, uh, I want to prove to myself and to everyone that supports me that, you know, I still have a lot to give. Jameson, thanks for the time. Plenty more Yankees Hot Stove.